do that intro? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the breakdown. If you're tuned in live, we all just saw Optic first phase. And if you're watching the VOD, you didn't catch it live. Unfortunately, the boys just lost a very close, but a series that we definitely should have won based on the way the, the cards were falling. But we'll break it all down for you. That was obviously the final uh, series of, of the weekend. Yeah. All the matches today were good. The rest of the weekend, we really can't say the same for, but yeah. we'll, uh, we'll go through it all, guys. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, guys. Again, thank you guys for joining us here. If you are live with us, if you're watching on VOD, thank you as well. Yeah, just another tough loss, but let's not dwell on that too much. We're going to start with the first match of the day. We'll get to the Optic versus Phase last. They played last uh, on the day. We're going to start off with the Seattle Surge taking on the Carolina Royal Ravens. Riley, you can bring it to my PC whenever you get a chance. Yeah, oh, Seattle? you already got it? Then, then switch to yours. But... I think Carolina did roster change. Okay, yeah. Straight up off the rip, I, I, I agree with you. I think Carolina has been struggling too much at this point uh, if, to not be considering looking at potentially making a roster If you're change. out slaying by 40 and you can't win the series versus Seattle... Was which, it 40? Scroll down, Riley. It was, it was 40. Granted, I, I know the map 3 control skews things, but I think it's time for a Carolina roster change. So they just want to, what? Just to keep it as blunt as I possibly can. If this team wants to make strides and make champs and actually try and at least be that fifth or sixth best team, right now I don't think it's cutting it. And that's really what people are fighting for right now. You got your top four. I think we saw a statistic this weekend that I wasn't familiar with, but I think it's 53-5 and five are the top four teams against everyone from fifth to twelfth, which is just unbelievable. We haven't yeah. seen that in the CDL ever. Just having four dominant teams like that that are just ripping through everyone else. So if you're trying to be competitive and you want to be in that fifth place spot, which right now, I mean, I don't even know who you give it to. Maybe Thieves uh, after their victory today. Yeah, to the um, Thieves or Vegas. But these guys got to make a change. And I think the only player that is safe on this team right now is Gwen. Gwen is a freaking shooter. Gwyn is definitely the most safe. Gwyn is the I, most I, safe. I mean, Gwyn should be the franchise tag. Um, Gwyn is disgusting. Go ahead. What do you want to say? What, what do you want to say? I don't want to say it. But I feel like you got to replace Fellow. Johnson. I feel because they're not getting rid of Clay because Clay's Clay. So yeah, Clay. The I, only other yeah. AR is Fellow. And when you're looking at the overall series, so this the series was interesting. So Seattle goes up 2-0. Seattle's been known for being very, very solid in search and destroy. And on the other side of things, Carolina's been known to be very, very not solid in search and destroy. Search and destroy has been where Carolina has struggled all year long. They're the bottom two in the league. They're right there with Boston. I think they're, what, 6-19 and 19 or something in the mode? And it just doesn't make sense to me. Because when you have players like Teach, Clay, Fellow even, and then you have a shooter like Gwynn, I just don't know what's going wrong for that team in search and destroy. I can't pinpoint a certain thing that's well, going simply, wrong for him. And today they lose two searches. It just can't happen. I know I know they outslayed this series. Granted, I think it was skewed. It really comes down to search and destroy. I, th I think they need to go find a player who's a consistent AR slayer who's also really good at search and destroy because their search and destroy is just not cutting it. Yeah. They do look solid on land, which kind of bothers me. Like, they knock out Vegas at the most recent major. So they show these glimpses, but we're past the point of glimpses. Uh, between Clay and Fellow... It's Clayster. I think he's the safe one when it comes to the two. I think Teej has been playing very well. I'm not being biased. He's one of my best friends. But yeah, I do think out of everybody, um, it's, it's probably Fellow. Yeah. I don't know. But on the other side of things, let's talk a little bit about Seattle. We're, we're kind of tearing down Royal Ravens a little bit. Seattle, obviously, they've had a turbulent year. Ender, you know, takes his leave from the team. Now they pick up 4 They they were already forced to make some some roster changes. They now drop Alec. They now have 4 on their team, and it was interesting because in the post match interview, Abuza something that really stuck out stuck out to me was that he said that he got to play his natural role, and his natural role is that obviously main AR. Well, no, yes, lock lock shit down, and that's what Alec's main role is as well. So already right there, there's a clash of roles. No, well, Abuza, and someone's got to change. Abuza's better than Alec this year so far. Yeah, Abuza's also. A main AR. I mean, he was a main AR in Challengers when he came up, and that's when everybody was talking about him. He was kind of like the number one draft pick when it came to Challengers. Yeah. Everybody was saying Abuza. He kind of gets thrown into a whirlwind because now you have Arsties on the team, so now he's forced to play this 
quicker pace, or at least try to. And I think the pacing on Seattle has been shit. Yeah. That being said, you also had Ender on the team, so is not even running an AR a lot of the time. So I think it was an overall shit show. I think the way the roster was built in the beginning kind of set Abuza up personally for failure. Granted, they actually were solid in the beginning because Ender was going crazy, especially in search. They pick up 04. 04 is a search star, and I think they look so better. Far, the today. pacing, the the pacing looks a lot better. Kyler's still aggressive. It looks like 04 is keeping up the pace with him. Brezzy looked more comfortable as well alongside 04. Yeah, the team looks better. Granted, they they lose to Carolina, who I think are pretty fucking shit. If I'm being honest, I don't think a game five victory over Carolina makes me a believer in search. I still think they're a bottom four team right now. It's a good start, though. I mean, it's it's better than losing. They have but. to they have to win this. And for Carolina, this is what really worries me is is Carolina's strength of schedule from this point on. They lose that first match. Now they got to play three of the top four throughout the rest of the split. It just worries me for this Carolina team. If they don't make a change, I just feel like it's just going to continue to get harder and harder for this them. This was a must win. It I was mean, a must when you win. Have, when you have tough matches coming up, it was it was a must win. Yeah, and I'm going to take just, and they lost it. And now you know if they want to actually be a contender, then they got to do some. Yeah, I agree. And I want to take a look at a couple of clips here uh, from that series. I'm going to have to go through and scrub and find them because we can't do it while they're live. Uh, this is always where I start tweaking. Uh, see, this is the thing, man, trying to find these. Oh, wait, this is the full broadcast. Okay, here we go. P3. Sorry, Zen. Give me a second. That's no, all right. Wait, what play are you trying to show us? I'm just, I just pointed out a couple of things. They're not really super important, but just a couple of things that I wanted to note throughout this, uh, throughout the games. Yeah. But yeah, chat, what do you guys think? You guys think Carolina and your roster change or what? I mean, this is too difficult. All right, Riley, bring it to me. Yeah, okay, I think everybody, for the most part, is in agreement that Carolina should make a roster change. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's it's they have to. And right here, I just wanted to point out this was a great. So we haven't really seen six star play out too much. Yeah. Um. So I just wanted to highlight a couple of things from this map that I thought Carolina did pretty well. Uh, right here, it's an absolute great break from Carolina. You can see they're setting up through the back. Or they actually broke it already. See, this is impossible. Never mind, just scrub it, Riley. Just scrub it. Let's move on to the next match. We're going to move on to LAT taking on Vegas. Sorry, guys. It's so hard to try to scrub through these matches while, while we don't have the live ones. I have a couple of clips from the other ones. We will take a look at the Optic series, uh, but on the laptop, it's so hard. So we're going to move on to the Vegas versus LAT series here. Both of these teams look very good. Joe Deceives looks insane. Nero looked insane. Joe Deceives is better than Afro this year. I don't think... Individually, I don't, especially in respawn. I don't think Nero looked insane today, dude. I mean, they lose the first map 250 to 49. Nero dropped 41 in the Vista hardpoint. That's be fair, fair. I don't think anybody looked good map one for Vegas. But 250 then, to 49. Yeah, but even even in the six-star search, Nero was the one throwing the smokes, finding multiple two Actually, pieces. you're right. He was the smoke criminal today. Nero, Nero in my opinion, was... At least from the eye test, the star for Vegas. Actually, in that yeah, series. I'm smoking absolute meth. He went plus twenty on the series, eighteen point yeah, five yeah, thousand Nero, damage. Nero Never mind. Yeah, my crazy. apologies. No, you're good. Purge, oh, on the other right. hand, did not play as well. He went negative twenty two in the series. But that's kind of the tough part for. So Vegas is in a weird spot. Vegas, I would say, is a fifth, sixth place team right now. If you were to call it a weak link, weak link, it is Purge. Sometimes Purge plays great, solid, and he's making game winning plays. Yeah. And sometimes he shits the bed. Something has to be said about his inconsistency because, sure, when he's playing good and doing his thing, you guys are a great team. When he has series like this, it's going to be tougher and tougher to beat top teams. Seven? Yeah. So it's, <laughs> what do you do? Seven? Yeah, map number one. I mean, upgrade? map number one, you can't really sit there and point at stats. I mean, dude, they just got out-rotated the whole entire time. On six-star especially, it seems like six-star is a pretty bang-out type map. Yeah. They were just out-rotated. I mean, seven's not great. Attach only drops eight. It's like, what are you supposed to do? I am impressed with how the Thieves played today. I don't know. Joe Deceives coming back into the roster. It just seems like these guys found their footing. And obviously, they, they have to deny a reverse sweep today against, against the Legion. But the Legion aren't a pushover team. So it doesn't really surprise me that it goes the distance. Um, but really, the sub duo impressed me heavily in the series today. Go ahead, Zen. 
I think Joe is an upgrade for Afro, one for one. I think Joe's little stint in Challengers probably improved him a bit. I, I've always actually liked Joe. I didn't like the duo of, of Joe and Afro. I don't think they played off each other very well. He gets a call up. Granted, it starts off hot. It was a 3-2 win. They kind of, it gets slippery. They lose maps three and four. So I like the move for Joe. I think my only thing about this series is what do you do at Purge? Do you keep riding it out? And it's like, yeah, we can be good. Or I think do you, you look have to. for someone more consistent? I think you have to. Because I think Vegas, again, they're, they're the fifth. They were fifth. They've been fifth for a long time. Thieves make a change. They come in. And Thieves just play lights out today. Vegas, obviously, 3-2, 250 to 247. We see an absolute bang out at the end of Vista. And you're right. Nero goes 40, what, 41, map four, Riley, 41 and 28 he with almost 7,000 damage. little 1.5 KD. I think Purge brings a lot more to the table than, than just statistics and obviously raw slang. And I don't think this team really needs more raw slang by dropping Purge. I think Attach, Geo, and Nero, that little trio, I think they have plenty of slang. I don't think they really need any more in the slang department. Yeah. But... Purge, they've said in multiple interviews that he's kind of their IGL and he keeps them calm and he's kind of direct, directing traffic out on the on the map and that's very important uh, for a team. I kind of want to sum up this series and go to Optic Phase if I'm being honest. I just want to talk about Optic Phase, but my, my summary and the way I feel about these two teams is I think they're the fifth and sixth best team in the league right now. Yeah. I think either of them can beat each other on pretty much any given day for the most part. Yeah. And I think right now they're five and six. I think Vegas have a potential... Upgrade opportunity if they look into replacing Purge. It is a risk because, you know, they are the fifth, sixth best team. It could be a risk. It could be an upgrade. I don't think they're breaking into the top four, but they could they could be more of an upset potential team if they get a little better. You know who I mean? do you think right now, after watching the teams, who do you think made the best roster change of the weekend? Sorry to put you on the spot. No, I, just... I mean, it has, I mean, Boston... Can't still can't win search despite Snoopy looking insane. Yeah, that yeah, it it has to be thieves. I mean thieves are Seattle, but I feel like I feel like the sample size right now is too is too small. See, I want to say thieves, but then again, it's like that thieves roster change. It it doesn't even really feel like a roster change because they're kind of playing musical chairs over there. Afro was struggling a lot, and they bring Joe to thieves. I mean Joe got dropped originally. And then they think, bring Joe back into the picture after he gets dropped. And now it seems like he's meshing with Kremp very well. So I don't know. It, it's it, it's a very good uh, roster change Real so far. Real for Heretics is a good shout as well. Real is Real, disgusting. Yeah, Real, Real was definitely an upgrade to that Heretics roster. Granted, I think Eric Boom came into a shit team. And, you know, take take that how you will. But I think Real is good. Rocker is a weird one because I think Rocker made half a good upgrade. I think Gunless for Awakening makes a lot of sense just based on the way Joe's been playing. Yeah, I don't like dropping Vivid. I would have, I would have, if I'm Rocker, I would have kept Vivid, picked up Gunless, and then went and got Standy if things still weren't working. That being said, we'll see how it develops. Standy had a tough most recent series. Granted, but I do, I do value the way Vivid plays a lot. So we'll we'll see. But as of this very moment. Seattle or Thieves or, or Heretics? I don't know. Ask, ask me in two weeks. I mean, granted, though, Standy and Minnesota, they have a very, very tough first two matches. I know. And it's like, it's kind of a tough one. I feel bad for the Minnesota boys because, I mean, you can't really feel bad for them because they're professionals now. And you, as a professional, you got to be able to spawn in against the best. But getting thrown into two of the top four in your first two matches, I mean, Standy had a tough one. Pierce looked great, though. No, Pierce, Pierce, Pierce looked, looked like he best didn't miss a beat. This weekend. Yeah, Pierce Pierce didn't miss a beat. He gets thrown back into it. Was playing amazing. Let's talk optic phase, man. You want to talk optic Let's phase? Let's talk optic phase, John. Right. Uh, you know, we see you guys. Obviously, this one, probably the match up of the split when it comes to... I mean, it's, it's the grand final rematch. It's what everybody wants to watch. Yeah. It starts off hot for us. The boys are absolutely gunning. Shotzi goes crazy statistically when it comes to the kill column all series long. And map one looked good. I mean, I think six stars, a nice breath, breath of fresh air. I think I think that was a huge momentum map for us because on a map like that, it was kind of all gunfights, right? It's it's yeah. very up in your face. It's kind of like Bocage from Vanguard. The boys played it very well. We went by about 43 points. We looked great on six star. Yeah. And that's a very good thing to have because FaZe's map pool is, is similar to ours. It, it has been. We tried to throw some new wrinkles in today. We tried playing them on high-rise S&D and high-rise control. Both maps, I think we probably should have won despite some throws. But a positive to take away from this is that we 
I don't want to, we didn't really dominate them because it's hard to dominate a team this level on map number one, but it looked like we were in the driver's seat for a majority of the map. Yeah. It looked like we were just, you know, ahead of the ahead of the game, ahead of the rotations, and brand in two minutes. This one's tough. I'm I'm gonna be as blunt as I can without being like a dick or anything. Yeah. I think something's gotta give when it comes to like how many times can we keep making similar mistakes yeah. that end up costing us maps against phase. Yeah. It's way easier said than done. Like it's so it's so much easier being here than actually playing to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Phase are an incredibly tough team to beat. When you give them some leeway, they will take it every time. When when you have four v twos in search, you have to win those rounds against Phase. I think there were it's two. It's not of them. Seattle. It's not Carolina. It's not Vegas. The top four can fucking pummel everybody else. When it comes to top four, you cannot fuck up clutch scenarios. It's gonna happen. I agree. It's gonna it's gonna happen every now and then. That's okay. But when you have multiple four v twos. They have to be cleaner. They they have to be concise. You need to slow it down and get it done. It it's it's simple. Yeah, no, it's not simple. It's hard, but it needs to be done. I think there were two two v fours, which turned into I don't know out of those two v fours, but there were two two v fours that turned into three one v ones, and like the two v fours just can't happen. Like like you were saying while we were while we were on the watch party. Once we get those first two kills, just fucking breathe for a second. Just literally sit down. We saw FaZe do it, actually, in the final round of the search. It's They get the first two bloods when they were up 5-4, and then all four of them are in their base in a straight line just playing for straight information. They're not giving us anything. They're going to make you plant the bomb, play the objective, and then they're going to come out and work off of that. So it's like, I agree with you. Those mistakes can't happen, and, honestly, and they've been think... happening a lot against specifically FaZe. I feel like against the other top teams... It hasn't really been that big of an issue. Against FaZe, it's been an issue, though. There needs to be a healthy medium. Like, you need to play FaZe confident because it's kind of like a fucking Tom and Jerry cartoon. You need to smack them in the in their face with a frying pan to let them know that they cannot do whatever they want. And we did that well. We, we, we kind of had them on a rubber band. Like, they knew that they couldn't just walk all over us. The fights were going our way. The fights were going their way. The gunfights were close. Yeah. I think... You need to have a healthy medium between playing confident and playing overconfident. I feel like sometimes individually, when we're playing that well, we kind of just want to fucking chow, chow, chow. And then that's when FaZe capitalizes. Well, Shotzi off the first two rounds of the map, I mean, he immediately finds the gap. But it's like, how many times can you get away with that? And it's kind of just referencing back to what you're saying. Like, the first round, he runs through underground, pops a two-piece. They don't even see him get under. Next round, I forget exactly what he did, but he finds another two in their back, like, basically in their base. Basically, what you're saying is just pump the brakes a little bit. Whenever you whenever you have I mean, your advantage, listen, just pump the brakes a little bit. If you have a four v two, you have to win it so, so against phase. For, like you can throw it like more yeah, often than it. not. Listen, no one's perfect. Mistakes are going to happen at, in any competition at any level. You, you're going to lose a four v two every now and then. We yeah. can't be losing multiple versus phase. Like this is a team that like we are right there. But being right there isn't enough. Like that's that's how you get the edge on phase. It's capitalizing when you have them fucked up like it's 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 getting it done when they don't have numbers and and when we don't do that it makes it so much harder to beat them because they don't fuck up they really don't so when you have 4v2s you need to win because you don't get that as, as often as you'd like yeah well riley bring it to me i actually want to take a look at the end of this round two control that everyone's talking about uh i just got to see it so essentially it's right now it's a seven versus four uh, there's 16 seconds left on the clock. We're on offense, so... Is this, the, is this the control? This is the control that that people said, if we just put down the controller, yeah. we're good. No, so, okay. I need to see it again. Yeah. First, so first and foremost, if we're going to talk about the negatives, we also have to talk about the positives. I understand that it may get annoying, but Shotzi is the reason this round went this way. Shotzi's 20 and 11. Shotzi is the reason crazy. why this map was close at all. That being said, we're about to see a mistake from Shotzi, and despite how crazy he was going earlier... That's the skill gap. It's it's not making the mistake in the final second. So yeah. let's see it. I thought he played it this aggressive because he didn't have a trophy, but I actually want to see it again to make sure. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly where it was because I didn't catch it while we were on the watch party, but I saw people getting pretty upset about it. So let's take a look at it. Let me pump that volume up. Does Atlanta still have this in them? Let's take a look at it. All right, so right here, we're double on point. Brandon's B Street, he dies. Ant dies on point. Is that what people are talking about when he dies on point? Or does he run off a point? And then right here, AG. It was before this. It was before this, yes. It was when they were all in their spawn and Ant. 
Pal's left side put paint on the guy's left window. All right, let me let me back up a little bit. Tell me what. Before this. Right here. Go back. Okay. Go back to. This is perfect. They're all in their spawn. The round is over here. They they're forced to go underground or left window. We have information on cross. We have everything. Yeah. So right here, Brandon gets a kill. This guy mid week. So this is perfect. Two piece. Two for two. Three guys dead. The round's done if Ant stays alive here. As, 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 as soon as he wins this fight, the round's done. Number three's cutting mid. He's at the very least making people weak. Okay, but so this is it right here. So I here's think the he's thing. dodging shit. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, here's the thing. He just got hit by a nade. Yeah. So, dude, this, see, this is one of those bang-bang plays where people are watching, and it's like, oh, my. See, people are watching, and they're fucking molding. They're like, why? But but look at this. So he, he chows off point left, which already, I feel like this is a great play right here. Cut off the first guy. This is their last guy. Well, no, he's got he information to, on him. He has to fight this. He's got to kill this guy. So he makes the right play. Killing him like this than a random 50-50. Okay. Now, so what? Number three is going to cut mid. But he gets stunned. I think I think he's about to get grenaded. So from a viewer perspective, it looks like he's going for kills. I think he's dodging dodging tax. That, that's what I think. He doesn't have a trophy on point. Exactly. He doesn't have a trophy on point. And he sees two people jumping out of their left side windows. Whenever people are jumping outside of their left side windows, you know that a fucking grenade is coming. And if you don't have a trophy, I I, I probably would have done the same shit. Like you're yeah. you're tweaking. You are literally you're like, I'm either gonna get naded or I'm gonna try to take a chow and get an extra kill for my teammates to be able to get up on the map and rehop the point. Yeah. So I don't know. Granted, it's, I think we should have won the series 3-0. It's it's one of those bang bang plays. Like, yeah, maybe it's not the best play, but dude, like, put yourself in his shoes. He doesn't have a trophy, and he's getting fucking coordinated on high rise on a the most natable site on on high rise. Yeah, like, uh, it's, we're not. And listen, no one's making excuses for anybody. No, I, I promise you that. But it wasn't the best play. But it's not like it's. I think his intentions were he's gonna die if he doesn't get to the front side of the point. Yeah. Is what I think. Could dude. we be wrong? Sure, but that's what it looked like. Dude, chat. So you're telling me you guys are playing ranked play. You're playing against fucking golds, and they're hitting those nades. You're playing against FaZe. You're about to get hit with four nades with no trophy on point? Like, I don't know. It's one of those where it's it's so, like, it, there's so much gray area in there. It's like where if it's a good play or bad play, I, I'm not upset about it. I think. I mean, it's obvious we're right there, but, like, we need to beat them to be there. It's yeah. like we're 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 right there, but how long are we, are we going to be right there? Like we need to capitalize when it matters. I agree. And the only way it's going to happen is if if it gets done. Like we can talk objectively about it all day. Phase are going to clutch up. They've been doing it. They they are phase. Like they they go out there, they win. There's a reason teams hate playing that team. Yeah. So, well, I want to also capitalize when, I want to also take up. a look at the end of the. Uh, the Rio, where where Simp ends up finding that gap because uh, well, we we well, have the setup at the end of the game. The beginning here. of this, so we should have won the series three zero. We make some mistakes. Okay, it happens. This okay, map, here it is. This map before this. Don't don't press play yet. Yeah, you're good. Uh, the first half of the game, we literally gave them the map. I mean, we they win P one. They have P two. Okay, they have P2 that happens. They have rotation. 30 seconds left. What do you think? We need to play for P3. Instead, we fight. They push through. They do you want me to go back to the, and try to find they that? They push to the back of P2. If I know you exactly want to. what you're I mean, talking about. I mean, sure, but it's it happened every hill. So they flip us to back P2. P3 pops. They hold P3. Yeah. We're on P4. They walk into P4. They kill us and wipe. It was too easy. We're getting chained on way too much. I mean, and then the boys turn the fuck up. And then it becomes a series, and and that's kind of where like people are, people are frustrated. It's it's the slow starts, and even like the CDL broadcast, they have a fucking thing pop up that says slow starts. They start here, you know, and then they they start picking it up throughout the game. Yeah. And those slow starts are really attributed to to what you're talking about with those those situations where they're pushing through spawns after getting a clean wave. And and we were talking about it actually during this map. You were like on the on the P two. You're like all right. We need to get a clean wave here and immediately run through. And Ant didn't block the spawn in time. I know. Yeah. I know you know what I'm he talking about. He tried to. He just took the. He took a different route. But, but let's play this out right here because this is this is the game. Like this is. What is this? Sims pinch. This is Sims pinch. So he does pinch. He's number seven on the mini map. But this is realistically like the game. 
Um, so if you want to take a look, uh, we get a, we get a kill bridge. So Ken's weak here, he gets traded. But we get but we retrade this guy. Pred shits on Abe. Mm, yeah, I mean honestly, that's a. I'm more so like. I want to say we fuck up, but I actually don't think we did. I think Simp catches the perfect timing. Because our guy off spawn was like two seconds away from picking up that yeah. choke point. Yeah, you so, see, you so guys see in the chat, number one is going to spawn right here, so, and he just catches the timing. So, so Kenny dies left. We have number four off spawn. He's trying to reinforce left because he's thinking they're hitting bridge with pinch times. Yeah. Our guy off spawn, he's about to go pick up the box pinch, and Simp hits it like two seconds before. Yeah, I guess there's really nothing we could have really done about that. Like, it's like it's so easy to say, it, oh, number four should have came and picked up boxes off spawn, but like, it was just a good play from Simp. I mean, yeah. Simp makes good plays. All phase makes good plays. I mean, but that's... We made good plays. That's like the play right there. That that play alone, like, if you just take a look at the minimap, I mean, you can bring it back to me, but I'm sure people probably understand, but if you look at the minimap, it's like, they have P2 side of the map now, our goal is to try to win off P1. Like, we don't want to go to a P2 here. Riley, can you bring it back to me, please? We don't want to go to a P2 here. They're holding this side of the map. Like, we we need to try to win off this. That pinch, I mean, it basically just seals the deal. Like, the P2 does get pretty mixy. Uh, granted, because there's team kills, shit going on. I mean, look how far back they spawn. This was actually a god play from number eight. Selium sits back in this left corner off spawn. Nobody's predicting this. Dude, because, see, like, that's, that, that's why they're so good. Like, they, they just... Individually, they all know what to do and when. It's yeah. like they have their system. It's a machine that doesn't malfunction. Yeah. Like they're all individually accountable and they know what plays to make individually to help the team succeed consistently. Yeah, but I just want to point out right here like, like look at this play. Cell comes off spawn deep back of the map. Of the map, plays a god corner, gets members, Kenny in the back, another, also kills Pred in lobby from back left. Like, the and then at this point, like. Any team that's playing Shotzi at this point, they get a two piece on RAR and and our our other sub. They're so they're immediately thinking, where is Shotzi? I so wish right you, when I that happens, was, I, I, th I wish it was anybody else but Shotzi too, because they fucking know Ant's ratting it up somewhere. Like I uh, I, I actually think, and this is so hindsight, and I, I could be just spewing bullshit. Yeah, I think Ant's better off aggressively challenging that guy gate and just trying to find one and just like mitigating pressure until they all collapse on him. You think he's better? Just trying to find I, one kill. I think he has to take a fight. Like well, I, he, I think he tries. I, that, yeah, like at, there, there at the end, I think he has to hit back right gate and chow out. I mean, I, I, your Shotzi, they know we're missing Shotzi. They're gonna go looking for him. It's super hindsight, so it's take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, but you kind of have to have this like knowledge of who you are and the way that other teams are gonna react to that. Yeah, it's like of when course. Shotzi's missing, they know where to look. They know. For the most part, he's on your side of the map. Well, we saw so many, so many times, and I'm actually gonna go, uh, Riley. Don't bring it to me yet, but I'm gonna go back to that round number three, which was one of the two v fours uh, that we just can't really let happen. Um, but you could even tell in the control. Like, I remember there was a situation where Draza's literally just turned around, staring at his back because Shotzi's last alive, and they know he's gonna repinch underground. Like, it's Ant. Um, but here we go. You can bring it to me. Uh, let's let's take a look at one of the two v fours that happens that we're talking about. And this is in such a crucial moment. It's like it's two. It's two. We're up two zero. Um, this is to go up three zero. And just take a look. I mean, we get the first two kills. We actually get gifted. Oh, what the fuck? The the hell just happened there? I clicked the sidebar. Did this? So already the man advantage okay. for optics. Let me go back. Fire from but Selium gifts us a blood. So the and then we're going to end up finding optics. another. And this is like, we, we have a BZ trapped nine. right here. But this is what we were talking about with FaZe. They immediately find trades so quickly. And this is, we well, could call it a 2v4. It's technically a 2v4. But Draza immediately finds the, pin, the, the trade onto Kenny where he gets the kill. Before Draza does take down and Kenny. then this is just, a BZ three. finds one. Well, trying to hit down B Street, though, and now we're in a 2v2 a in a crucial round. Draza finds Brandon, and it's like... I mean, now I think you have to fault our players for losing a couple 4v2s, but... Easy, but and I know hate, people hate to hear it, but you also have to give credit to FaZe for getting it done. I mean, like, they are so effective at trades where it's like they immediately make a 4v2, a 2v2, and then it's a whole new round at that point. I mean, at that point, it's... Whatever happened 10 seconds prior doesn't matter. I mean, it's a 2v2, and... We lost a couple 1v1s. If Dashi, Dashi wins a big gunfight on Selium, we win that round. Pred, 
unfortunate timing, right? Like he he reads Simp wrong. He plants right in front of him. He thinks Simp's gonna hit him out. Simp goes blue. So it's 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 tough, man. I mean, obviously, I think that was our series to win, and you know, maps maps two and three are very tough. Yeah, I also want to try to take a look at. Do you remember what round it was? The nine versus five. Whenever they ended up clutching out in the control, was it round four? I can't remember. Oh uh, yeah, it was the two one round. It was the two one round. Yeah. So let me just fast forward. And a then we bit had here. two cruises on defense, and we lost the map. When you call a cruise, so it's already been. Texas wait, are you everyone sure? Everyone needs to play their play their lives. Work with in case anything gets a little bit. Oh wait, you're talking about the on, on the control. And with only 20 seconds left, Never was nine five. Did a job. They already completed the segment. Oh, and they and we were on offense. You mean? Yeah. Just to work I think that was the same round that Ant and Chow. Was it the same round? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we were talking. It was like a nine a before, visible. and then we just yeah. All right, but, but also real quick to talk about the control more. Yeah. Nonetheless, we have a round five defense, which should be a win, especially when you have two uh, two cruise missiles. I think we did a terrible job at mitigating lives. I mean, I think they had like a four or five life lead when they cap B. Yeah. We tried. So with 28 seconds left, they had neither point. Pred gets a kill back left of the map. He's green shack. I think I would have liked to see Pred try and streak there because he knows that all the pressure is on the right side of the map. You're saying proactively use the streak and keep them trapped in their base. Yes. Basically. When, when he was far left, I think he should have called the streak there because that's 28 seconds. At the bare minimum, they're forced to get off. We're looking at 23 to 25 seconds left. We, we're going to go get map control. The issue was we used the cruise after we get wiped. Then two of us die while we're using the cruise, which completely makes the cruise useless. Yeah. So... Well, I also want to try to find this clip because I thought it was fucking hilarious. At the at the end of game one, I mean, Kremp for LAT just goes absolutely nuts. Riley, you can bring it to me. Um, but uh, listen, GG, Faze, obviously an unreal team. They're they're so hard to beat. So when you have the opportunity to beat them, that's when it gets so much more frustrating. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, it's it's really just closing out games against them, and I think that we're right there with them. I know people are gonna disagree and all that because obviously it's an L on the if it's a one or a zero it's an L but like dude we are right there the past three times we've played them we have literally been right there it's literally just clutching up at the end of games we're not doing it they are so if we can start doing it and it's so much easier said than done like we're literally right there but Riley bring it to me I thought this was fucking hilarious on a lighter note uh Th that boy cramp uh it, it gets a little bit scary they obviously 50 point club so it's deserved but this guy goes nuts look at him in the top right he starts fucking yeah, he didn't stop too it wasn't like once or twice just watch he hits it once he hits it twice he said fuck out of here fuck you i mean that's got to feel good I, you just look at the look at the body language for, for lat series games got reverse swept look at that look at the body language for those guys I mean, team changes, they make a one-person right change, there. but body language already for this team looks way better. Yeah, no, they look good. I, I mean, Krimp mean, looks like he's bringing the hype. They're having fun out there. Thankfully, they won that series, or he would have been absolutely verbaled all over every single social media platform out there. But at least they're having fun. It looks like LAT might have some new uh, some new wind in their sails, perhaps, yeah. with their recent roster change. Are there any other matches you want to talk about throughout the weekends in? Honestly, I think every match besides today was awful. So just and to recap, kind of what happened. Um, Boston Boston throws when Snoopy has a 110 kill series. Granted, Real comes out, drops a 1.25, has an incredible debut, finally gets his damn visa. LAG go 0-6 map count. They get fucking pummeled. FaZe walked all over Rocker. New York beat Rocker 3-1, and that was it. Yeah, I just want to talk about Real a little bit. Real impressed me a lot and it, it we were talking about it it kind of makes you think what the Carolina team could have been because Real was on that team um right on Carolina yeah 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 and, and Real was, they couldn't get his uh visa figured out watching watching him play man that kid he's good like you know doing the eye test whenever you see some of these players play he knows what the fuck's going on he looks fluid on the map I mean He's a shooter, bro. I'm I'm interested to see how he kind of develops throughout the rest of this year because he's had a lot of issues throughout this year trying to even make it in to be able to play. 
now that he's here, I mean, 1.25, 18,000 damage, it speaks for itself. And his statistics are impressive, but not only his statistics. I mean, just his overall, the way he looks, it's just impressive, man. I also want to say, I don't think Pentagram having 50 less engagements than Snoopy is going to help that SMG duo thrive. Yeah. I think you need to have a little more, uh, you know, similar pace. Granted, Snoopy was going off. He's very fast, but... A lot of controversy around Snoopy. I mean, Slasher was saying he doesn't know spawns on any map four months into the game. And Snoopy comes out and like, it, it goes crazy. Beans yeah. was also having a series. So, and, and Boston let's... needs to start winning some damn searches. I mean, they're in the fuck, they're in last place, which is honestly crazy to say because coming into the year, we had them like fifth, sixth. I yeah. mean, they, they built a good roster. It didn't work out. But if Boston don't start getting wins, they're, they're not going to champs. They are in dead last. They're in dead last. I mean, Riley, if you want to pull up the standings for us really quick, just to give a quick snapshot and then we'll move on into the rest of the show. Um, I, it, it blows my mind that Boston is in last place. Like when that roster was announced at the start of the year and you told me they're in last place halfway through the season, I would have said, you got to be shitting me. Like it's, it's mind blowing. Well, I do have one question. Spot. I do have one question for you and the chat, though. I mean, do you think that Snoopy is gonna feel a little bit more activated now? Obviously, you said that Beans and yes, Slasher no, there's are two. Definitely less pressure on Snoopy personally. Like they're, we all know Slasher. Slasher is one of the best Call of Duty players of all time. I mean, he's. But we all know Slasher, and we know how we, how he can get fed up, especially when you're a last place team. I mean, Slasher is not gonna settle for last place. So when he sees his teammates making mistakes like that. He's going to let it be known, and especially for a rookie, that can be tough. I feel like Beans is a lot, is not going to be as aggressive or like apprehensive to the way Snoopy's playing. Uh -huh. I, th I think it's going to roll off Beans' shoulder a lot easier than it would Slasher. Yeah. You know? Oh, 100%. Riley, they're, so, they're telling us to pull up some tweets over in the chat. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ken tweeted that they need better communication skills. I mean, Riley, could you, could you pull them up for us really quick? Just take a look at them. Uh, I mean, I guess what did you say? We Kenny said Kenny said Philip felt like we played that series pretty good, but uh, our communication needs to be better. And then Brandon tweeted, "GG's trolled the fuck out of that series." And I, I mean, I'd agree. It's like, see, it's it's good that that the players are aware because they they know like it, it's good that their mental is there because they they know they can compete. Like, yeah, they lost. It's six zero. FaZe is dominating us this year. It's, I mean, there's no other way to put it. They're dominating us this year. They're 6-0 and against us. Um, in previous years, it wasn't like that, but right now it is. Um, but the players tweeting out that they're they're trolling and like they know they can compete, which is good because they're not... I don't think they're letting it compound. Like the, Today was a very close series. We're not seeing a mental barrier, in my opinion, is the, is the long-winded thing that I'm trying to get to. Yeah, we're competitive with them. I mean, yeah. we're, we're there, but we need to do it. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, it just like, sets up for listen, a rematch, dude. Listen, I can't fucking wait. To I'm see not it. the one out there playing against FaZe. So yeah. you you got to realize, I understand you guys want us to talk about it a certain way, but playing and beating FaZe is very hard, and we try our, to talk objectively about it the best we possibly can. Like, today we trolled maps, period. Like, we, yeah. we fucking threw maps two and three. But the players know that. We know that. What do you want us to really say? It's getting anybody's like it's getting like, the, the like, viewers to like, know that the issue with shit like this is I understand passion, but like people saying drop pred or like you're dumb. Like I can't reason with people who are stupid about certain things. Like yeah. it's, it's one thing to talk objectively about it, and it's one thing to be like, like bro, who the fuck are you gonna go get for pred to go beat face? Can someone <laughs> tell me? Yeah, let's hear it. A anybody in chat who said. Drop Pred. Who are you, who are you picking up for Pred to go beat Face? Yeah, I'll, I'll, hear. Please, like how stupid can some people be? I mean, well, to, to just to like kind of touch on your point, I saw people in the chat saying Pred's getting shit on, and he was like plus five. So I don't know. He's if literally they're... one of the best players in the world. He was just at the major, and people wanted to fucking wave flags with his face on him. Yeah, I don't really know what they're talking about because he was plus five, and they were like. They were like, Pred's getting shit on. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Are y'all watching the same thing we're watching? He's literally plus five right now. It's like, you know, objectively, we threw that one. We'll get him again, and hopefully next time we beat him. I mean, they're a tough, they're a tough fucking beat. I think right now we're the second best team in the game. I agree. Phase, I, is, phase is number one. Okay. Phase, phase, yep, is number, no phase is number one, and Optic is number two right now. I mean, they 
that's just what it is right now. And hopefully, hopefully soon that changes. All right, guys. Well, Speaking we have phase. we have a very special guest. We've had him waiting for a little bit. He just got off a match. It's the Ferris wheel. Tyler Abizi. What's good, Ferris? Yo, what's good? What's up, you motherfucker, dude? Yeah, what's dude, good? Yo, what's why up? the fuck are you smiling, dude? Yeah, why are you smiling on here, man? What are you doing? Oh, my bad, my bad. Let, me, let me get a straight face. My yeah. Bad. All right, well, what's congratulations. Good, yeah, What's first off, what's going on? Talk to us. Big win today. Uh, how how are you feeling overall? Just give us the, the overall vibe of where you're at. I mean, I'm feeling... I mean... I could be better. I mean, I'm not going to lie. So before that series, I don't know what it was, but I got I started getting the craziest migraine. I hate being that guy, but like, it was like one of those ones where you literally feel like you can't think straight. And I was like tweaking. I'm like, bro. I was like, even if I take medicine, it's not going to go away in time. So I'm like, I'm just got to fight through it. I was really fighting through it. And like, thankfully we like iced up and won, but I mean, it just happens. You know what I mean? So you're telling me that you just beat us like that with a migraine. Dude, I was fighting for my life, bro. You I was just, like, I was like, I think after the match, I like stood up and I was like, guys, like, you guys uh, bro, are fucking just gross. I had it the couldn't worst get worse. It, yeah, we thought it couldn't get worse, and it just got worse. <laughs> well, oh, well, are you feeling better at least? Uh, I took some medicine after the match, and I, it started like started fading away a little bit. So it's not that bad right now. But yeah, it was it was a tough one to fight through for sure. Yeah, usually okay. like when I was sick playing, the adrenaline would like always at least bring me back to like a certain point where I didn't yeah. feel like complete shit, but I'm glad you're feeling better. I mean, that, that fucking sucks. Um, uh, so I'm, yeah. I'm going to ask you bluntly from our perspective watching, it felt like we had you guys there on like maps two and three. Like we had some four V twos, the control. Uh, there was one time where you guys killed Ant off the point off the last second and lost like a nine V four. How does it feel as a player? Like, does it feel like, we kind of choked a bit. Does it feel like you guys clutched up, mix of both? Like, from your perspective, is it like, fuck, they just trolled? Or is like, just talk me through it. Oh, I mean, I mean, after we, after we won the round, we were like, oh my God, they just fucking choked. Like, we were literally <laughs> like, we were like hyped because we knew that like winning that round would still give us a chance to win the map. You know what I mean? Like, we were like, if we go down, if you go down, if you lose an offense on that map, it's going to be really hard to like bring it back because you probably have to win an offense. And even if you win that offense, you might get like another offense, like round five. So winning that round, like kind of helped us, you know, maintain that composure to like know that we could still bring it back and win. Yeah, it just I laugh. It's it's so hard. To, it's so hard to hear you say that. Like they just fucking choked. I mean, it, realistically, it was it was back and forth all series. There were so many clutches by yeah. you guys. I gotta ask, like, just as a team, how do you guys continue to do this? Uh, not only against us and our team, but literally against every team. You guys always seem to have very calm and cool heads in the clutch moments. Uh, would you attribute that to anything? Like how how are how are the comms in those tight situations? I mean, sometimes our comms do get hectic, but I feel like we're so good because I think a lot of people hear our comms from an outside perspective and they like, they're like, wow, their comms are insane. Like they're super fast, but I feel like we're all really good at like still hearing, you know, everyone, even when they do get that hectic. But I mean, um, I mean, it's definitely nice to, you know, have that ice. I feel like as a team, because I feel like we've always kind of had that ice uh, in clutch moments and matches. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, it's pretty, it's pretty dope that we have that. Yeah, I mean, it I've sounded, felt the ice. I've, it's, it's, they're icy. They're I mean, pretty yeah, icy. dude, you guys are all right. Yeah. Uh, it sounded so. We got to listen on Six Star. For a bit, it sounded like Selium, my boy MC, was not a full blown IGL, but he was like really, like sort of, really out there getting vocal. He's like, "Yo, pick up pinch, yeah. get this." Like, how has his comms? Because I, I can't lie, I think years ago he was, you couldn't even understand the guy. Like, I, I genuinely think, like, in old listenings, you couldn't understand him. Now you can make some words out. Like, how does, how does, I guess, the overall, do you guys have an IGL and would you give that to somebody or do you think it's just a team effort is my question. I feel like with us, it's usually a team effort. I mean, bringing Zach on our team, I feel like he brings that, like, confidence and just, like, composure because he just is, like, always locked in. You know what I mean? And I feel like MC, like, his comps have definitely gotten better over the years. Um, I feel like he's worked on it, obviously, like, individually. And because, uh, I mean, he definitely comps super fast. Like, sometimes we're like, oh, my God. Yeah, like, he talks he talks in those hype moments, he's just, you know, spamming comps, like, spamming. But, I mean, it's, it's definitely, I feel like it's a team effort for us for sure. Yeah, talking about Zach a little bit, or Draws, for everyone that doesn't know him uh, by that name. 
Uh, what would you say that he provides your team that, that some of your other fourths didn't? And this isn't to tear down your other fourths because you've played with some great players. It's more so to touch on the strengths of draws and, and what he brings to your team uh, just overall. Uh, I feel like for us, like after last year, we realized like MC should be our main AR, just the way he plays the game. Uh, he plays a, he plays like super methodical. He just, you know, is always, he's a pretty slow player. So after, I feel like Cold War, he started slowing down a bit and we were like, okay, after MW2, we we're like, we need to get a faster paced AR. Like we need to get a flex. So we knew Zach was like, you know, the one, like we knew that he, like I said, he's going to bring the composure. He's going to bring the pace. He's down to run it down anytime. You know what I mean? He's always down to like in an S and D, like let's run it down. Like he doesn't <laughs> care. And he'll follow up me and Chris whenever we need him to, and just get that trade. You know, I feel like that helped our team a lot because I feel like our pacing over the past couple years before this season was super inconsistent and it showed in Hardpoint especially. Yeah, well, people were calling, people were saying MC was playing for Strictly Kills and I was mind blown that that was a thing going on because yeah. it was it was clearly like a pacing thing and it makes sense that Draws has helped you guys a lot with that. From, oh yeah, 100%. from what we know about your team, I was watching UFC last night and uh, so I'm going to tie it in a bit here. Perea won the belt or defended his belt and he was like, I don't let this belt get to my head. Like, I still prepare and practice the same way I would, knowing I have to go out there and win it every time. And from what we know about your team, I feel like you guys take practice very seriously and, like, you guys are held very accountable. Because, like, granted, I think a lot of pros don't play like they used to, but I feel like from what we know about you guys, you guys get incredible practice and, like, your system is... Like, you're all individually accountable. There's no one showing up late. You're all there watching VOD, like... What is the practice and preparation like for you guys, despite being the best? Because a lot of people, they, they start feeling like the best, and that's when they fall off. Yeah, I mean, for us, I feel like we know that we always have to put in that 110% effort, you know, in practice, anything. Because if not, like you said, like, you're going to falter. Like, there's going to be times where you're going to falter for sure. So, um, I feel like going after, like, Major 1, we were like, yo, we got to, you know put in even that extra 10% of like doing just like, you know, the nerdy stuff, like about, you know, any map, whatever the case is, you gotta, you gotta like go super hard at all times, especially because I feel like even if you falter a little bit, you can lose to some of the bottom like eight teams. It's, it's, it's like a super competitive league. So I feel like for us, we're always putting in that extra effort and in practice, we're taking it like super seriously to make sure we're always getting better at even just the little things. Yeah, and I, I want to ask another question following up on that because obviously in the community, a lot of people play 8s, S&D 8s, all that stuff, and you guys really aren't in them. Draws is in them. Uh, is there a reason why you guys don't play 8s, or is it because you think you're getting good enough practice with your actual team that you don't really need to play them and form bad tendencies or, or whatever it is? Yeah, well, I feel like Zach is really good about playing 8s and, you know, learning some of that nerdy stuff that you can learn in 8s. Um for me personally, and I'm pretty sure even like Chris and MC, they're just, uh, I think we're all kind of the same. We feel like eights kind of play a little bit differently compared to matches. Uh, a lot of people play a lot like faster. They'll just do like random stuff in eights to try to like test timings and stuff like that. And I feel like I, I don't know, I'm, I'm more of like a, I'd rather like focus just purely on like S&D scrims and then matches because they com they play, like I said, completely different. Yeah, and right. I don't want to get any like bad tendencies. So that's why I don't really play them that much. Great answer. I got two things. MC's shooting bodies now. Do you guys fucking love it? Kayshawn, what's up? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, MC shooting bodies, like, bro, he's he's just hilarious. Like, the guy is so funny. He's always just throwing jokes around, you know, even at, like, the event. Like, I saw, like, the Pred clip where MC went to the bathroom and said, nice cock. Like, dude, <laughs> he's, 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 he's a comedian, bro. He's so funny, man. Dude, like, what's up with you phase guys, man? Because even Alec, I remember Alec back in the day, he'd, like, blow a kiss across the stage, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, did he just blow a kiss That's at why me? Got rid of it's Austin. coming from FaZe. I don't know what's going on in That's that camp. That's why they got rid of Austin. They were like, we need a fucking troll. This We need some more trolliness. Austin was Bro, the hat Austin's on, not trolling. Fucking mean mugging him and shit. No. Um, who do you think made the best roster change? Oh, so, shit. Because we finally saw some changes. We got Real for Heretics. We got Gunless and Standy to Rocker. Um, Joe Deceives back to, back to Thieves. Who do you think... Out of all these teams, top four is pretty dominant, but who do you think made the best roster change? I probably – it's tough because, like I said, the top four is just above and beyond, like, the rest of the teams at the moment. It's just so hard for them to, like, lose. But I feel like if I had to go with one, it'd have to be LAT. Um, 
my boy Joe is on that team, I and I feel it. like he's he's super he's super talented, and I feel like he hasn't you know tapped into that potential. I feel like today he was like frying out there. So I feel like if I had to go with one, it'd be them. Yeah. All right. Well, I have one more question for you, and then we'll let you go. We know that you waited, so thank you for hopping on. First off, oh, no um, problem, no problem. But Pleasure. so this year, obviously, the top four is insane. Like I think the the series record is fifty three and four, fifty three and five. Would you say that it's the distribution of ta- of talent across the teams, or would you say it's more so the game and the skill gap of the game? I'm just curious what your opinion is. You know, obviously, winning an event. I think is. A product of both because I feel like the game is obviously there's a pretty big skill gap with 150 HP. I feel like usually the higher the TTK, the more of a skill gap there will be. And then obviously, like you said, the the talent distribution is kind of you know more leaning towards all the top four teams. I feel like after last year, everyone had that you know yo let's build our like god roster, let's build our like dream team like. And I feel like the top four teams just ran away with all the talent. So I feel like it's hard for those bottom teams to kind of compete sometimes. All right, I got one more question off of that question. So if we had the same teams last year at MW2, do you think there would be more upsets? Uh, I definitely think there would be a little bit more upsets, especially because of how 100%. that game played. Uh, because, you know, the TTK was just insanely fast. Like, you could just get away with some, like, crazy pieces, get behind people, Dude. you know, Deddy, stuff like that. So, I mean, for sure. I still remember that kill, bottom orange, uh, that Simp got. On Pred? Yeah, he oh, shot, shot, yeah. shot gunned him. It's still like that's like the the Dude. the stick out one of the stick out moments of the entire year. Oh yeah, that was insane. I didn't even know how I got that kill. When he got that kill, I was like, oh my god. He was like was three like, HP and he just <laughs> Yeah, I was like, bro. A piece. That was nuts. Yeah. You got anything else or should we let Abe go? I don't, man. Just congratulations on the major two win hey. and, and I mean you guys you guys look undeniable right now. So yeah. uh I mean you've been dominating since coming on through. So I'm done glazing you. Thank you, but fuck you. I yeah. appreciate you guys. Appreciate you hey, coming hey, on. Hey, thanks for stopping hey. by, kid. Have a good rest of your hey, night. No problem. Yeah, you guys have a good night. Peace. He's so likable. See, that's the. See, like, he's that's so the like, thing. I fuck. I wish I could hate him. It's like you. It's like you see you see the results and you see like the chats and shit, and then you like talk to Abe and you're like, I love this guy. They, they, yeah. Abe's a really good guy. Um, but we don't like him when we're playing him. I'll tell you that. We don't like enemies, him when we're playing enemies him. Enemies for just a bit, and then. All's back to normal. But shout out to Abe for hopping on. Uh, we we mixed up the order a little bit. We just didn't want to keep him waiting too long. Obviously, after a match, we're just thankful that he even made time and came on to to do a quick little interview with us. So shout out to Abe. Uh, but next up, we're gonna move into our team of the week. Let's talk about some of the players that really stood out and pressed us throughout the first week of the split. Uh, Zin, is there anybody that you want to throw out there? Because I got two that I know for sure. Hmm. Well, you want me to pick an AR or a sub? Uh, you can pick whatever you want. If Snoopy won, I would have put Snoopy on it. I'm going to go at Real. He did not. I'm, I'm going to go at Real. I think Real's debut was... Uh, I think Real is undeniable for Team of the Week. I, I think... Mean, comes in... I think... I couldn't find the words, but I feel like his debut was inevitable. Carolina, not figuring out his visa, could come back to bite them in the ass because the way he played um, against Boston was impressive, and obviously it was... Only one series from him, but he drops like a 1.25. He's going crazy in that series. The plays he was making, the pieces he was getting, I think Real belongs in the team of the week. Yeah, and again, uh, I am very, very interested to see how he develops. Uh, He's on Miami right now. Miami's been struggling. They get a win against Boston in a Game 5 fashion. You know, he comes into Miami. It's a tough situation. They've they've had a tough year, but I know that he, he looks solid. So I'm interested to see how he develops. I feel like, you know... Potential. He comes in midpoint of the year, but he could overtake rookie of the year. Yeah, he, I mean, he has he, a lot of work I'm, to do, but he could. I mean, I'm, right right now, who do you give it to? Is it Gwen? It's Gwen right now, okay, but yeah. he has a very solid chance of Orleans, overtaking. That. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll we'll see. How but Real he's on develops. Miami, and they've been struggling, so we'll have to see how they develop. It's it's a shout. It's a long shout, but it's a shout. Next up, it's it's, it's simp. Just throw him on. I mean, the kid is MVP form right now. He's been having an MVP year. Everybody always says 150 HP simp. This one's not debatable. Uh, I mean, the kid's just been unreal, dude. He makes the game-winning play, basically, to take us out today in the map number four on Rio. He's been so good, man. Like, he's, I feel like he's always on this shit. 
It's, it's so hard to not put him on it, though. It's like, how do we say he's not on it? He's Chat, let me ask you guys, because I'm genuinely curious. What do you think about us putting on players that, for example, played one series and lost? Do you guys think, despite losing, some players still deserve to be on Team of the Week? Genuine question. My opinion's kind of split on it. So I'm curious to know what you guys think about putting players on that that didn't win. Well, that's also why we're trying to do, with these five-week uh, splits, we're trying to do one every a breakdown every two weeks. This one's obviously at the start. Uh, but we're trying to, so we just have more to, like, go off of. Because yeah. it's very hard. when we, we only have eight matches to go off of for, for some of these segments. Uh, and that's why we're kind of, like, trying to push it. Because during the next split, we're going to have what? Three, four, four. Like, we're going to have 11 matches to go off of. That's so much more than eight matches. Like, it's kind of hard sometimes. But that's that's good intel. Uh, we'll keep that in mind just because, yeah, it's, it's not a lot of subject matter for us. Uh, but next up, chat, we can debate with you guys a little bit on who you want to round out the rest of Dash. the team. Huh? I was going to put Brandon on it. You're going to put Brandon on it? I was. I'm sure chat has no problem with that. Chat, what do we think about Brandon? Obviously, they did lose, though. Before that, I asked about how we feel about putting teams on at that loss. But there's different losses. Like, there's losing to, you know, yeah. a Seattle, a Carolina, and then there's losing to a phase. Yeah. And Fry, you know what I'm saying? It's like, there's different losses. So, it's 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 a little it's a little tricky in there. Um, I think Joe Deceives, I mean, we already have two shout. SMGs, but honestly, let's throw Joe Deceives on there. I don't want Joe Deceives, I don't, Nero. I don't, I, don't, I don't think we can leave Joe out because Joe won and he still went off. It was his debut series. I also feel like he gets a lot of criticism about like the way he plays, but I, I kind of agree with Abizi where it's like I always saw the potential in Joe. I just don't think any of the teams he was on, maybe until now, set him up properly. I loved how Joe played today. I he was loved, getting hype. I loved how Joe and Kremp were working off each other, not only in map number two, but in map number five as well. I was calling it out the whole watch party. Those guys were in tandem, banging shit every single round. And again, if it's readable, that's one thing. But if you're doing it with a teammate and you work together and get your trades, I love the way him and Kremp were looking on the sub duo today. Like, I'm excited to see how they develop because if they keep playing like that, it's just textbook Call of Duty. Like, it's 150 HP. Having two people there, it's you're not going to get like the lineup type shit on this game as much. And I feel like they just played it well. I, I loved how they were playing today. So we have Real, Joe. We have three subs right now. That's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm making the team? executive. I'd like to put Dash on it. I, okay. loved, I loved what I saw from Brandon. I think that map one on a map like six star to kick it off like that. I think he dropped a 1.3. On the series? I mean, Brandon Brandon was going off. Brandon came to play today. And another shout, Shotzi came to play today as well. Shotzi yeah. kept us in a lot of those maps as well. Uh, Brandon also came to play. Yeah, they lost. It was super close. I'm down to throw him on. Zinni made the executive, so I can't even, I can't even fucking fight it, guys. I can't even fight it. I he mean, made no, the executive. I, I'm Listen, sure, and I'll take... I, I have no shame in putting Dashie on the team of the week from what I saw against FaZe. I know everybody wants us to beat FaZe. We're all right there with you. He was still going off. He was doing his thing. Like, whatever Brandon could do, he was winning 1v1s versus BZ. He was popping off in hardpoint. He was getting hill time. He was doing his thing. So I think I think that's a pretty well-rounded team of the week. Yeah, I agree. Chat, any, uh, I mean, Draza as well. I mean, it's kind of... And you can't call me biased because... Because for Draza, example... Draza, Gunless. Like, there's so many other players that you could definitely have thrown on this. Um... Kleenex. Kleenex. I mean, we can't give you. I mean, all four SMGs, can we? I mean, nah, technically we, we can, but we can't. It's that's our it. team of the week. I feel like it's solid enough. Once again, you guys, we've been saying this since day one. There is always going to be a debate for different players. Like, there's too many players that play in a weekend. Yeah. For us to properly narrow down a top four that everyone's happy with. Someone said Envoy. That's fucked up. He bounced back. He bounced he, back a little bit. He had a crazy search after uh, a tough map one. No, Envoy, Envoy bounced back. We need Dill. We need Dill to. I mean, we don't need him to start shooting. Yeah. As a friend of Dill, I'd like to see him. You know, yeah, start coming out of his slump because I feel like he's in a little bit of a slump right now. But yeah. it's Dill, and I'm sure he'll be fine. He's on Toronto. Like they're gonna figure it out. But that's our team of the week. I know some of you guys don't agree with it. What do you guys think? W or L team? I think it's a good one. I think the only problem is there's three subs. That's my only concern with it. I think it's a solid squad. 
I'll be looking over here, buddy. What's next? Rapid fire? Rapid fire's up next. Come that's on why I'm covering now. My, let's get right into it, That's man. why I'm covering my screen let's over here. Let's get right into it. Come I'll, on now. I don't want them to see my, my questions. Chat, you guys know it. You love it. Welcome to Rapid Fire. I lost the last one. I've been on a bit of a losing streak, I feel I've like. I've been kind of turnt on the Rapid Fires. Yeah, I don't know. These questions, I've, I don't I don't know what happened to me, but we'll figure it out. Do we have a wheel, Riley? <laughs> All right, Chad. Here's the wheel. Oh, 50 gifted. Damn. Okay, spin that wheel. Damn. Wait, spin we still that need wheel. To, we still need the cream pies in, chat. When are we going to do that? I got it coming. No pun intended. Winner's choice? That shit's crazy. Wait. I'm just going to pick the 50 gifted. <laughs> okay, so so it's 50 gifted. All right. I want to I want to be asked first. Okay, I got you. All right, chat. You guys know the drill. The winner of this gets 50 gifted subscribers. 60-second countdown is going to start. We each have 10 questions for one another. And you guys know the drill. Riley, you ready? Gotcha. So when I say go, I'm going to go three, two, one, go. When I say go, Abner uh No, don't put, any, don't put any emote only. Emote only, yes. Come on! Emote only. Okay, Riley, three, two, one, go. Who is our new presenting sponsor for match picks and maps mode? Razor. Who tweeted just saw Sensor fall to his knees in a Walmart? Slasher. Who was yesterday's special guest on the watch party? Davis and Mace. Which player got more kills in S and D than their map one hard point? Dylan. Which team has the hardest strength of schedule to split? Uh Carolina. What code can you use to get thirty percent off a Corduroy's pet bed? Optic Pet thirty. Which team threw a five two lead in S and D yesterday, map two? Uh Vegas. No. Which player has been dropped after starting? With a team for the fourth year in a row. Vivid. Yes. Which, who did Attach say his favorite wrestler was of all time? Undertaker. Which player's cruise missile got taken out by the six-star tower? Uh, Joe. No. All right, you got eight right. Who was that? Grant. Fuck! Who was, the, who was yesterday's 5-2? Uh, Breach. Fuck! How do I get that wrong, dude? No, you, I got, I got, got, I got eight right, bro. Dude, what I the literally. Fuck! Who was the special guest on the watch party? I literally, dude? I literally froze when I, I froze in the fucking headlights, dude. Riley's getting lazy. I froze in the headlights. All right. Who? What? Yeah, but come on, Riley. I got eight right. No, that shouldn't be a question. Who was yesterday's special guest on the watch party? So you asked what I ate for breakfast. All right, here we go. All right, on go. Three, two, one, go. What percentage of series have the top four teams 3 0 the rest of the league? 48%. Which player fell off the map in a 1v1 yesterday? Uh, fuck, what's his name? Uh, Real? No. Which franchise has the most 3 0 sweeps in the CDL era? Phase. Who is the first team since Cold War to start seven different players in back to back seasons? Breach. What was the name of the Fortnite dance AI Scump did yesterday? I don't know. Uh, Pompon? No. Which three teams have yet to earn any points on land? Damn. Three teams? Yeah, three. What? <laughs> Bro, Miami? Yep. Bro, what the <laughs> fuck? This is so fucked. You're a scumbag. <laughs> I lost. <laughs> Oh, name two fruits that appeared on the Smoothie King LED wall graphic. Strawberries and apples? <laughs> no. Oh, dude. Nah, this is scummy. Dude. You just go oh, to the next segment, man. <laughs> Who was the special guest on the watch party yesterday? Name three oh teams that haven't God. gotten a point on land. Yo, you just got fucking hoed. I'll let you give me 25. All right, deal. That's I'll let that. you give me 25. That, that's a good deal. I'll shake for that. That's, what do you say? That's fucking insane. Oh, man. That's fucking nuts, Riley. That's hilarious, though. Wait, who fell off the map, though? I forget. Lens. Oh, it was Lens. Okay. Yeah, it was, was Lens. I, I knew it was like a, a rookie. Uh, all right. Well, that's rapid fire. Zinni just got so fucked there. Smarty, thank you for the 10 gifted big dog. I actually, you just got fucked.
What can you do? You just got fucked. That see, I can admit when it's super unfair. That was unfair. Wait, what you was got the, like three part? What quests. was the Fortnite emo? I never even played Fortnite. The the breakdown. Oh my god. Yeah, that that one. I was like sitting there, like, there's no way he gets this. And then he had th a three a three legged question, and then a two legged question or four leg question back to back. Yeah. You got you got yeah. That's tough. What are you gonna do? All right. Next up, What's guys. Our next segment. It is our top plays of the week. Let's check out what the players did and what we thought was impressive. Let's see what True Baby cooked up for us today. Hopefully nothing from Friday. Huh? Hopefully nothing from Friday. Get on matches. that laptop gift. I'm giving you 20. I told Zinni to get on that laptop and gift me subs. I'm going to give you 20. All right, here we go. Our first day of matches. Riley, whenever you're ready, bring it to me, buddy. And we're starting it off with none other. Tuh. Chad, I'm just happy we're all seeing this shit, man. I mean, it's uh, it's Simp the Pimp on a five streak. The guy's unbelievable. MVP caliber season against Minnesota. Minnesota actually looked decent in this series until they didn't. Uh, the, the first half of this map looked good, and then the rest was not pretty. That's Simp the Pimp, five streak. What are you going to do? Draza, I mean... Accuracy. Oh, it's actually accuracy when he 180'd Abe. Sorry, Abe. Oh, what what the fuck just happened? What just happened? Let me go back. I don't know what I just hit, but I just completely... What are you laughing oh at? Oh, my God. Sorry, Abe. Turned on by accuracy. Well, that's only 20, by the way. Five more. Yeah, I don't think I'm giving you five more. Geo 6 streak. I think you just got a free $100. Huh? What what just happened to me is like you walking to the bathroom on a street <gasps> and just seeing one hundred dollars and picking it up, dude. There's no way you're salty. Can you lock in for the show? Holy shit! You just missed the four piece. No, from I the saw. Salt. Yeah, no, the exploding propane. Bang! And that's four down. He takes out Estra with it, but you don't see that very often. These things need to be erased from the map. By the way. Yeah, Chat. they need to stop blowing up. Can we? agree as a community to get those fucking propane tanks off of the map? I mean, holy guacamole, brother. They're just causing absolute havoc, and I'm not talking cult. Yeah, no, it's not skillful. It's just random, man. I mean, they, sometimes they randomly blow up. I mean, you really... I think we eliminate them. It's I'm time to make them so they don't cult. blow up. All right, here we go. Day number two. We have some more clips for you here. What do we got? Oh, this is the, uh, was this the 1v1? Oh, no, it wasn't the 1v1. This is the Envoy oh, 1 versus 2. this was the Envoy 2. 1v2. Yeah, this was his bounce back because he had a really tough map 1, and this is the search he took over started going crazy. Oh, this was actually... Dude, Snoopy was yeah. making plays in here, bro. I actually feel bad for yesterday's loss because this guy was under a lot of scrutiny. He comes out and goes ballistic, and they still couldn't win a search. That's so tragic. Like, I mean, he's just switching lanes, sliding back between doors. He kind of gets gifted a three-piece there, but yeah, seven streak from Snoop. The guy had a crazy series despite the loss. I feel bad as well. Next up, what do we got? Caesar Skies Bueno. 10 streak. Karachi hard point. This was nice. Yeah, Caesar's been going on some crazy streaks this year. I feel like this isn't the first time we've seen him go on like a, an 8 plus kill streak. Yeah, no, uh, Caesar, Caesar on the was show. doing his thing. And I think I saw him in here earlier. I think he actually resubbed. Caesar, if you're still in here, keep up the good shit there, pal. Gets the nine from top ACs, holding down his power spots. And the last one, freebie. Look down below you. Hasta la vista. Guns. Oh. Yeah, here it is. Oh, yeah. This is. This would have been nice to see. I mean, either way, I was screwed, man. I mean, once you said three teams that have I don't even know which three teams haven't gotten a point on land. I know it's Heretics. Dude, you're still Miami on it? Thieves. What? Dude, you're still on it? Well, I was just... Well, because it reminded me. <laughs> Oh man, it's a tough. It's it's a tough L to hold. Watch this one more time. See you, buddy. Where's the falling sound just, effect, Riley? He just leans back. That, that would have been a filthy clutch too. Kismet used his mind powers, and he said, "I've got that dog in me. Jump off the map." Peace. There he goes. All right. Next up, what do we got? We got a lens three piece. Gets one, gets two. That was actually okay, filthy. Yeah, so that wasn't from his POV, but. Yeah. It wasn't from Lens is still good. Also, I think you misspoke earlier. I think actually rookie of the year right now is Geo. We said yeah, Gwen, that's fair. I mean, you got to give it to Geo because of how good Vegas has been. That's fair. A little Hydra three piece on the point. This was actually this large was, as well. This was huge from Lamar. And I they mean, lose single, the round. Yes, he, he single handedly gave his team the chance to win this round. Honestly, I thought they won it right here. I mean, this was beautiful from Lamar. 
just holding that absolute dirty iron, dude. He's not going to let go of that thing. And, I mean, this guy, you see him once a week. It's Hydra. Didn't even know this was back here. I actually jumped on this today while I was playing ranked. No idea how I got back here. Three. Four. I mean, this kid is a fun POV to watch, man. Yeah, he's when he's when he's moving, it's just it's like it's like him and Abe Simp, like all the submachine gun players that pre even AG, all the he's all playing the hybrid, right? Isn't he playing hybrid or something? Someone was I, saying. I feel like a lot of the players switched to hybrid. Really? And we've got. Oh, is this a little ode to 420 that's coming up in six days? A four minute and 20 second segment here on our final day. Four minute and 20 seconds of clips? Dude, True's on his bullshit. It's a montage, True. True's on his bullshit. God damn. Wait, Clay actually started snapping here. Clayster turned back the clock here today. 19 and four. Goes on a nine streak. Clay doing his thing out there. James, if you hear me, that's what I'm talking about. Good fucking shit. Dude, now Carolina's confusing because I feel like I predicted Seattle, but Carolina, they just should not be as bad at, at search as they are. Yeah, they got to win some they searches. They shouldn't be losing clutch searches all the time. This was still impressive, though. Despite the loss, this was still impressive out of Clay. He's 21-4. and four. I mean, granted, though, I will say... Seattle is three and sixteen in control on the year. That is no, miserable. That was filthy. I mean, those shots with the rival. Yeah. Granted, that gun's crazy, but I mean, those are some good shots for Clay. Now, what do we got? The Gwyn three. Oh, piece. this was the this was the round win right here. This was crazy, and, and this is what Mark called it. Mark was like, "Watch, he's gonna do it." Yeah, I didn't he, believe him because like, oh, he's about to die for free. I, I don't know what took so long for this guy to pounce on him. Oh four was definitely weak there. There's no way he was full health. TJ one v three ace to kick off the to kick off the map number five. Which they still lost. I mean, today, this this series was actually nuts. Like, it was a 1v3 round one into another 1v3 the next round for Seattle. It's just shit like that. We're going to fast forward a little bit. Catches the timing. Peace 04. Welcome to the big show. Tej. 1v3. Tej is going crazy. Look at him. boy, man. He's been playing well. Hate to see that team struggling. This guy had a fucking match day, let me tell you. He was screaming, loving it, getting his kills. There's a reason he's on that breakdown team of the week. Yeah, this guy played out of his mind. Yo deceives from rank play into the league. It's actually crazy, yeah. From Vanguard rank play to this. Piecing today. Good for him, man. Actually piecing. That, you know, that's when, that's when rank play was, you know, you know, you could actually get noticed from it, kind of. You don't think so anymore? No, now I think you're cheating. Oh, yeah. You got to watch out for that tower there, Krempy. That was actually insane. I would lose my mind if I was in. You got to watch out for that tower. Just the Purge three-piece. Yeah, this yeah. is actually big. Nice play from Purge. Big time pinch. Yeah, Purge. Dude, Purge does have his moments of actually being very solid. It's just sometimes he does have those absolute stink bombs. Yeah. But again, he, he's valuable in the comms. He's, he's leading the no, troops, he is. Man. He is actually very valuable in comms. This, oh, yeah. This, this is was, when I was like, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, that was not great. And Ghosty again with another three-piece. So this was back-to-back -back three pieces from Daniel Ghosty. And that's just too easy. And, oh, my God. Yeah, Should we go back and watch this, actually, bro? This was nuts. What, the end of this map? This, this, the end of this map was actually nuts, bro. And yeah, Nero goes crazy. Peekaboo. Look at the play, the pop this oh, was this nice. was nuts, too. Dude, I don't know how Ant, like, Ant becomes weak, little smoke bomb like he's Batman, jumps on the wall, finds, I believe, who's that simp. Dude, I don't know how he pulls shit like this off. Jumps up, and instantly simp is just in that position. Oh, dude. This is like the second time we've seen this. First, we saw it on Invasion Control against Toronto. Ant just switches lanes. He, he goes from one side of the map to the other, and he's a hard read. I mean, it's hard to be like, okay, where's Ant going? Right now, he's our pit. Okay, now he's about to go bottom blue, and then he's going to go top heli. It's like, where is the prick? Well, the first time he did it, it was against Toronto. This time he does it, it's against Fate. Yep. It seems like Ant has been having some super, super good streaks whenever he's playing against the top teams in Control. It's just, they go hand in hand. Uh, unfortunately, they 
they end up losing this map, but got to give credit to Shotzi, man. He's, he had a hell of a map number three, bro. Despite the outcome, guy dropped 40. Like, you know, he was doing his, he was doing his thing out there, man. He was getting his kills. Yeah, this one not so fun to watch. Simp. That was such a good pinch, man. Simp pops three. Such a good pinch. Game-winning pinch, honestly. What are you gonna do? That's the end of our top plays for the week. Thank you very much to True for going back and grabbing those. Next up, we've got another fun segment for you guys. We've got Who's That Pokemon? Riley, that do you got the whiteboards? Pokemon? They're in the drawer in front of us. Would you look at that? Grab that, son. Yes, they yes are. there is. Hey, hey, thanks, man. All right. Are we putting anything on this? Dude, what, do you want to rob me again? I just give you a free $100. Chat, should we put something on this or just do this one for fun? <laughs> that was insane, dude. Ah. Riley just sauced me free gift. It's good shit, Riley. I would have had that. I would have had which two players clutched a 1v3. Zin, they want to. They want us to put something on it. Yeah, because it's not their cash. They want us to put. Let's put ten gifted. Let's have some fun. Come on. They're acting like me when I watch train wrecks are exposed. But yeah, fucking do it. Yeah, it's let's not put, my money. Let's put ten. Ten gifted. Ten Whatever, gifted. Man. Let's go. Sure Riley, enough. run it. Twenty sixteen. You say. Okay. NA player, but not American. Okay. MVP of CWL Atlanta and CWL Seattle. Okay. I know who it is. I know who it is. Zinny doesn't oh, yeah. know no, who so it do is. Zinny's so do tweaking. Do Zinny doesn't know. He thinks he does, but he doesn't. He's no, tweaking. We, no, we both got it right. All Ready? right, three, two, one. Gunless. Gunless. I probably should have wrote mine a little bit bigger, but yeah, that's yep. Big P. I know that. I know Big yep. P. All right, next up, Riley. Let's go. All that right. one was too easy, Riley. Way too easy. 2015, all 2015, right. 2015, okay. Poker enthusiast. What? X Games 2015 bronze medalist. Denial, envy, subliners, and thieves. Oh, God. Bro, What? Oh, shit. Am I tripping? 2015. Was that the first or second X Games? Had to have been the first, right? First 2014 was Ghost. This was AW. AW? Right? I'm genuinely mind blown right now. I can't think of who this prick is. Fuck's sake. I, I don't know either. So, I mean... Poker enthusiast? Yeah, that's what's throwing me off, too. I'm looking Wait, at chat so for he help. Began they, they can't even fucking help us. He began competing in 2015? Hold on. Okay, I'm ready. I think I might have it. All I right. don't know. You ready? Three, two, one. Who do you... Who? 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 Temp. Who is it? Donnie. Oh my god, I said who? Yup. Oh my god, it was his duo! What? Fuck! Oh. Oh my god, he's not even a poker enthusiast, he made up a lyric! Oh god. I'm up 2-1. Began competing in 2011? 2017's IW, right? Yeah, IW. Completed one of the greatest comebacks in COD history. I, 
I'm ready. I'm not. One of only two players to appear in three straight championship grand finals. Wait. Okay, I got it. Or oh, I think. I don't know. Is it J-Cap? J-Cap. Apathy. Fuck sake. Is that all three? I, I win. All right. Oh my god, at least you got something back. Yeah, you can get me 10 tomorrow, brother, and hopefully they fucking tr run train on me. I'm not giving you anything. Hopefully they get run scammed. train on me. You're getting scammed. Well, shit. Damn, I clutched up. Dude, Let's go, Donald. I literally, I literally picked Donnie's duo, bro. Oh, that's so frustrating. Let's go, Donald. That's so frustrating. All right, what do we got? Uh, our last segment of the day, guys, where we get to answer some of your guys' questions from the chat. It's the call of the community. Uh, whatever questions you guys got, you want us to answer, let's hear them. It could be anything. We might not answer it, but it can be anything. Oh, man. I can't believe that shit. What a day, man. Yeah, let's let's see what you guys cooked up for us. Here we go. Hey, what's up, study? What's up, buddy? What do I think of Gunless back in the league? That's a great one. Uh, I love Pierce back in the league. I think he's... Uh, he's paid his dues. I think he's put a lot of work in behind the scenes. And I'm excited to see him back. And he played great. Played great in their first two series despite losing two. But they played also two of the top four teams. So what are you going to do? But yeah, it's good to see Pierce back in. Excited to see how they play against some of the, the fifth through 12 teams. I cursed Liverpool. How do I feel? I know, man. Fuck. All right. We'll get there. Uh, do you think FaZe will be in every grand finals this year? No. How many more is there? Three more? I think there'll be one tournament where they get like third. Yeah, who knows? But I could see them also being, I mean, dude, it's like, I could also see them being in all the grand finals. I don't know. We'll see. What's your options for Carolina? It depends. It depends on what you're doing, man. I mean, if you get rid of someone, probably fellow. You either make TJ Flex and get an SMG, like someone like Asim, or you get a slang AR like Temp or, or someone else from Challengers, really, I feel like are the options. Uh, is Envoy in a rough spot or bad team chem or falling off? They're uh, fine. He's okay. No, I think Dill's just in his head, honestly. I mean, it happens It happens in every esports sport. I mean, sometimes you just, one little thing goes wrong and it, you, you start thinking about it and you dwell on it and then it starts kind of snowballing into a bigger issue. But usually players of that caliber come out of slumps. Uh, so I'm confident in Dylan to uh, to come out of it. And, and, he, and he's on an amazing team. Like, he's on fucking Toronto. Like, MVP front runners right now? He'll uh, be fine. Simp, sell, scrap. I think right now it's got to go to Simp or Cell. For MVP? Yeah. Yeah, mine would probably be Simp right now. Right Simp now, or Cell. Right now I think it goes Simp or Cell. I think Envoy is getting dropped soon, respectfully. No. Uh, I'm really not sure. So you have to also think about who they could possibly get that also has a similar ceiling. And, and you also can't define a player by a couple matches. I mean, th this is a story, one of the best players in recent history. Yeah. Dill's fine, man. Will I ever make my own org? No. Well, never say never, but right now, perfectly There's the happy. intro. Yep. Intro has a mind of its own. Perfectly happy with my current situation. How do you feel about the constant roster changes? Do you take a chance and build something and keep losing? Well, I mean, the... The, um... Uh... What should we call it? The the format just isn't very forgiving. It kind of forces his team to make quick roster changes. Like every team wants to make champs. It's obviously the most prominent tournament, biggest prize pool, most hype. So it kind of incentivizes teams to make changes quick, and it it does kind of force teams to rush into making roster changes. I feel like. Uh, scump, come on, man. You said scump niner question mark. You miss competing? Yes, I do. 
Do you? Yeah. Certain aspects of it, for sure. I mean, I don't think people understand, like, dude, the amount of time that goes into to competing and the amount, the little amount of matches that are, that are played nowadays, it's kind of fucking, like, I mean, it's shit. I don't know. For me, it's like competing, first and foremost, was always a... Uh, a comforting thought when things weren't going well. Like, at the very least, I had, like, an escape in, like, my team. Like, you know, every day I'm going to do my shit with my team every day. I would say now it's very hard to, like, calculate progress and, like, where I'm at. Whereas, like, I used to be able to directly know how good I was individually, where my team stacks up. Now it's like I don't really have anything I feel like I'm good at, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Not yeah, of course. Like, I don't have, like, a way to, like... You have... I mean, you're working towards goals, but they're different goals. Yeah. Like, but I also think the goals are different, man. I mean, I can't... And the high is also winning a tournament. Like, I don't think there's... Yeah. There's not much like it. That that dope hit. There's no way to, like, track progress. A little sad. I, I don't mean for it to be sad. I just mean, like, I used to really directly know when I'm improving and when I'm not improving. And now it's like, what do you base that off of? A sub count? Like, it's just... There isn't really a way to really... Judge progress, I feel like. Like like when you're competing. Champs win, blackout, godlike. <laughs> I bet. Uh, I wish there was a retired pros weekend league. What, like the beer league? That shit would be kind of... I weird. just wish we had like 2Ks back. So we could just actually go get hyped for tournaments. And uh, the, 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 boom, the boomer league... Does Optic win a major? Sure hope so. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're all rooting for it. They're obviously competitive with the best team in the world. Mm. It's just getting over that hump and beating them. Yeah, no, I mean, I've said it. And, I mean, again, it's people. It's it's hard to be unbiased because, obviously, this is our organization. And, you know, but I genuinely think that they're going to get at least one this year. I don't know which one it's going to be, but I, I think they're going to get one. I hope they get one. Because if not, it's gonna be like another second. Like I feel like they're, I feel like they're gonna get one. But I feel like they're, they're right. I feel like they're the second best team in the game right now, and I don't think that's really debatable. The old culture feels so dead. No two Ks, no GBs. It feels like we went from architecture, like nice ass buildings, to super super modern, all the same bullshit. It feels like some of this lost its soul. Is is the way to say it bluntly. Like, like, we all love it. We love competitive Call of Duty. But to say it has the same, like, soul that it used to is simply wrong. Like, we need to go back to prior format. We need to bring the community together again. Everything's so separate. Everything's so individual. Granted, there's a lot more money in it now, and there's a lot more to, to win and lose. But th there are things that we could be doing to get some of that old-school feeling back, and it just feels pretty damn soulless, man. Someone said, why does the smack talk seem so toxic this year? I mean, really, it's just a new generation of players, honestly, and they're kind of forming their own storylines and beefs, and, you know, it's that's just, I feel like that's kind of natural. Yeah. You know? Uh, I mean, you see it. It's really the younger guys that are going at it. It's, it's none of like the, the vet. I mean, it's, it's not really the vets or the older guys. It's, it's the younger yeah. guys. Um, I love it, personally. I think it's fucking hilarious. Breakdowns every week. Uh, not during the five-week splits. During the four-week split, yes, because there will be more matches for us to break down. Uh, during the five weeks, no. I think we're going to keep it every two weeks. Thoughts on the fanless major? Come on, it's dog shit, man. We, we all agree. We would love to see fans at every single event. Like, it's just, what can we say? It's something we can't change, but it's unacceptable. Really? I mean, yeah, it's it fucking sucks. And again, it's like, we might have got fucked. We might not even be able to watch Party It anymore because my wedding was scheduled to be around a week after Major 4, and now if they're pushing it back a week, which is, I don't know if it's been officially announced or if it's rumor, but I saw someone tweet it out, pretty credible source. Uh, Yeah, we're going to be fucked. Yeah, we're probably not going to watch Party Major 4 if that's true. Yeah, which fucking sucks. Um. We planned around the CDL, and then if it gets pushed back a week, I mean, there's really nothing we can do about it. It's been a long day, man. I think we call it there. Yeah, I'm down. 
We had a uh, – it was – today was a great day of matches. I would have – we all would have loved to see Optic take it against FaZe, but today, at least, compared to the rest of the of the weekend, was a very fun day of competitive Call of Duty. Hopefully, we get a, a five-week online qualifier is unacceptable. It's just not hype enough to bring people in every fucking weekend. K-Switch, thank you for five, buddy. But Much love to you. Hopefully, hopefully, we get some super competitive matches going forward. It's fun to see some new rosters. Really hoping some of these bottom teams turn it around, but – yeah, thank you guys for watching. It was uh, another fun weekend as always. Yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Hope you guys enjoyed the watch party. Uh, next weekend, we're doing it all again. Again, there probably won't be a breakdown after the matches next weekend. It'll be after week number three. Uh, so thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Thanks for coming out, showing love in the chat. Uh, again, not the result that we wanted today, but, um, you know, what are you going to do? Hopefully, you uh, hey, thank you. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. But, yeah, hopefully. Our boy, Jay. We're going to get him one of these fucking times. We're going to get him. But Hopefully thanks, guys. Soon, damn it. Have a good rest of your night. Thank we'll you, guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, I think I'll be live tomorrow. I'm pretty sure I'll be live tomorrow. Yep, I'll be live tomorrow. Yeah. See you guys then. See ya.